Uh, as you have heard, my name is Jacob Kibari. I teach at uh, the university, that is uh, Southeastern University in Kenya. Uh, it's part of uh, Nairobi University. Uh, I teach environmental uh, science, as well as I teach at the university. My talk is on uh, environmental health and social impacts of uh, tobacco farming in Kenya. And then in my second presentation uh, tonight is uh, going to be on what are we doing on the, our current project of uh, uh, bamboo as an alternative crop to tobacco. Now, my presentation is based on the, the FCTC uh, framework and uh, Article 18, uh, which is on uh, protection of environment and the uh, health of persons working in the tobacco sector. Now, I would like to indicate that Kenya is a signatory to the WHO FCTC uh, framework, and uh, we have a Tobacco Control Act. Uh, since 2007. This act is exactly done from the uh, framework to ensure that we control tobacco in terms of uh, consumption and in terms of uh, cultivation. Now briefly in terms of consumption, uh, since 2008, uh, no smoking of Tobacco is allowed in Kenya, in the streets, in the streets of Kenyan towns. If you visit the Kenyan towns, you are not allowed to smoke in the streets or towns. You cannot smoke in the government institutions and also even some private offices. Kenya, you are also not allowed to smoke even in your own house if you have your children in the house. So that's our law. Even your house is a public place if you have your wife and children. So that is our Tobacco Control Act of 2008. Now, part of this, uh, there is also that uh, we are supposed to promote alternative crops to tobacco in our act. Then we have Vision 2030. Vision 2030 is uh, when Kenya, we want to move from uh, a developing country to a middle income country by 2030. So everybody in Kenya is working towards uh, 2030 when Kenya will be a middle income country. Now, the environmental goal that we have set by 2030 is uh, that our country aims to be a nation that has a clean, secure, and sustainable environment by that time. Uh, in the tobacco sector, we hope that by 2030, we should be able to deal with all environmental issues in that sector by getting alternative crops to tobacco. Now, tobacco in Kenya is grown in uh, three presses. Uh, which is indicated as South Nyanza, uh, Western and Eastern parts of Kenya. Uh, Kenya, we are in the East African parts of Africa. Uh, we border the Indian Ocean, uh, we border Somali, to the north we border uh, Ethiopia, Sudan, Uganda, and uh, to the south we border Tanzania. We are also part of the Lake Victoria. So that's uh, uh, where we are in Kenya. Now, in terms of uh, tobacco farmers, we have a total of uh, the current figures by last year we did the uh, survey. Uh, we have the total <coughs> number is 55,000 farmers. Now, I need to mention that uh, the Kenyan people, the majority depend on the agricultural sector. 
and it's a major contributor to our Roshi national product, that's GNP. Our revenues, most of them are from the cultural sector, and of course from tourism. We also depend a lot on tourism. Now, the number of tobacco farmers has been growing from 1971, we had about 1,500 farmers. Uh, when PAT came to Kenya, they started tobacco farming in three regions, and they started working with 500 farmers in every region. But now the number has grown up, up to uh, currently we are talking of, uh, uh, you can see how the number has been going up, now we are talking of 55,000. And the number is growing every year. Uh, the number of tobacco companies has also increased from one to three. Now we have uh, PNT, we have uh, Mastermind Tobacco. This is a Kenyan company uh, of a former worker or staff, senior staff of PNT, uh, who was able to run about how tobacco farming is done, and he started his own company. So he's a major competitor to PAT in Kenya. We have also Tobacco Alliance One. Now, the major threat that we have in Kenya is that uh, the expansion of tobacco is actually from medium to high potential agricultural areas due to the corrupts of uh, cotton, sisal, pyrethrum, and the coffee farming sectors. <coughs> These sectors have uh, had a lot of economic challenges at the international market. Now, when this industry is corrupt, then tobacco companies have been taking advantage and uh, offering tobacco as an alternative crop to those ones which are failing. So that is the major threat that we have in Kenya. So tobacco in Kenya is being offered as an alternative crop to where other crops are failed because of uh, international uh, factors. Now, uh, I would like to say that uh, tobacco farming uh, is undertaken between eight to nine months in Kenya, and uh, it is very intensive because it has several steps. To undergo from the recruitment every season there is recruitment it takes place almost a whole month where they come uh, to the village they promise all kinds of things to farmers and then they do recruitment and contracting farmers have to sign contracts every season then after that farmers are given inputs and the support services uh, training and uh, all kinds of services then farmers establish nurseries. After they establish nurseries, they are supposed to be preparing their land. And then they do planting. And then there is crop management. This is where there is a lot of work required, managing your farm, uh, so that you can be able to get quality leaf. Then there is harvesting. This is the time when the, even children have to get out of school, because harvesting has to be done within a particular period. Then after that, there is a stage of curing of tobacco. This season, which also lasts almost one month, is the time even men, you cannot sleep in your house even a single day. You have to be out to do the curing of tobacco. Then it comes to the stage of sorting and the grabbing of the tobacco reef, very intensive, and then transportation of the tobacco now to the market. Then, after that, oh, there is the weighing and the, the payment, which is also another exercise, because sometimes you wake up very early in the morning, you wait for eight hours, 10 hours for your tobacco to be weighed, or sometimes you wait for two days for your tobacco to be weighed. And when you go for payment, you can also queue there for two, three, four days to be paid your money. So it's a, uh, it's a, a crop which requires uh, a lot of time uh, from the farmers. Now, it has had a lot of impacts, and uh, I'd like to go into this area. One of the areas where the
there yeah. has been a negative impact is on uh, land because the land under tobacco has continued to grow from an average of 1,500 acres in 1971 because farmers in Kenya they grow on an average of one acre yeah it's an average of one acre so at the moment we are talking of land increasing to 55,000 acres and uh, this one is increasing every year yeah uh, livestock activities uh, are reducing to, re to due to limited land. There is no land for our livestock now in those areas, so farmers have abandoned livestock farming. There is no land for, for grazing. The fertile land allocation preferences were always given to tobacco farming or not to other crops. Whenever you have some piece of land which is fertile, now that fertile land is usually selected by tobacco companies that this is the one we want because it's the one which is fertile. Now, tobacco has been opened up. It has opened up new areas for tobacco farming. Fighting areas where we have forests, now they have been opened up due to the forestation or practice of shifting cultivation to marginal lands. Soil erosion has been the major problem. Exposure of the soil to uh, to heavy rains and the most of these parts of uh, where tobacco is grown in Kenya as you are aware in Kenya we receive almost rains almost throughout the year most parts of where tobacco is being grown so in degradation due to heavy application of pesticides and synthetic fertilizers this is one of the major problems uh, we have with our soils tobacco is also more dependent on certain chemicals than many other crops there are other crops we can be able to grow without using even fertilizer. But tobacco, you must be able to use the fertilizers and the chemicals. Uh, nutrient extraction, tobacco degrades soil nutrients at a much faster rate than most crops. This is something which has been done and uh, very clear that tobacco really takes up uh, nutrients. Why? Even the farmers can tell you that uh, where I have planted tobacco this year, I leave it for about two, three, four, five years before I plant other crops. Because the following year, if you plant like maize, maize cannot be able to do that first. So tobacco takes up all the nutrients and uh, you need the land to regain after a long time. Now, no mulching is allowed in tobacco farms, so that's why it leads to uh, soil erosion. Generally, there is decrease in production of food crops like maize, beans, because of this soil erosion and uh, degradation. So you can be able to see downstream a lot of uh, garries are caused because most of the areas have been opened up uh, for tobacco farming. Now, we have had a major impact to water quality. You will find in these regions, before tobacco came in in 1971, if you talk to the local people there, they will tell you that they used to actually to fetch water from the local streams, natural streams, and they used to take the water home and use it for, for cooking, for washing, and everything. But this is not the case at the moment, because most of the tobacco nurseries are established near the rivers. So all the chemicals that are used, that are applied in the nurseries, all these chemicals uh, actually end up in the rivers. So you cannot use the rivers directly. So people have to get out of uh, the area to go and get clean water. It's quite difficult for the farmers because they have to uh, walk up to maybe even 50, 60 kilometers to get clean water. Now, the other problem is on firewood. Uh, the tobacco which is being grown in Kenya requires a lot of fire. You see like this farmer, this just one season, and he has one acre. And you can see he has almost about 15 tons of firewood used just for one acre. The same here. This firewood is just for one season every year. You must be able to cut down these trees. And these trees take up to 15, 20 years to mature. But you see every year he has to cut them down. 
is even children now have gone to market to sell uh, firewood, uh, which is required for the curing process. So this is a major area where tobacco has done a lot of destruction to our our uh, environment. Now, the, this firewood, I mean the trees, are also cut down. Construct such a keywording parts, these houses. They are always being constructed. There are also these things which are used by the women to tie the tobacco. So every season you need these sticks, or sometimes you can use them for two, three seasons, and you must be able to cut down more trees so that you can be able to use them for uh, this kind of business. Now, every year in Kenya, we cut down about 0 0.5 million trees uh, for tobacco keyway. This is the average. This is what we cut down. Uh, when you look at the tonnage and how much you need, we have calculated to be 0 0.5 million tons. I mean trees are cut down every year. Now, this is one of the regions where tobacco farming is being done. And uh, you can see a farm of tobacco. But when you see the hill up here, uh, all the trees have been, have been cut down. And uh, this, is, this land belongs to this farmer. But he has cut down all trees, and now he has to get the trees outside the, the farm. These are children also taking the firewood to the market to, to sell, so that they can be able, the farmers can be able to get firewood for, for cultivation. All the indigenous trees, these are our indigenous forests, some parts which are now being cleared, you can be able to see. And uh, most of the indigenous trees are being replaced by eucalyptus, which demands a lot of water. Yeah? And uh, more, right now we have counted about 50 indigenous trees have actually disappeared in tobacco farming regions. So most of our indigenous forests are disappearing and they are being replaced by eucalyptus. This is what PAT is uh, providing the, the farmers. Now, in tobacco farming regions, this is exactly what you see in our, in our hills. Farmers have cut down all mature trees. And uh, this is the trend everywhere. You can be able to see like this farmer is cutting out these trees so that to even the branches so that you can be able to use this one for, for keywording. Now, in terms of, uh, because we have done, cut down our forests, most of the rivers, now they are changing from permanent to seasonal rivers, about 85% of our rivers in tobacco farming regions, they are now seasonal rivers. They are no longer permanent. In 1970, they used to be permanent, but now they are changing, they have changed to be seasonal rivers because we have done cut down our forests. So a river like this one, in 1970s, you can there was not possible to, to cross in this area. But now, even during the rain season, young kids can cross here. There is no problem because the water levels have gone down. Now people have to fetch water for long distances, up to even 50 kilometers away. We have to search for water whenever we have a, a dry month, because we have actually destroyed all our, our forests. Women have also to walk long distances to collect water. And uh, basically, the only two rivers which are permanent in this region where I'm working, there, there is a, one river called Hipwa and the Pesi. These are the only two permanent rivers. But initially, we had quite a good number. And as I've said, about 85% have now disappeared. There is also one of the power plants, electricity generating power plant called Sondu Miriu. Currently, it is facing a major problem. Yeah, when it was constructed about uh, 30 years ago, there was a lot of water. But now there's no water for that electricity to plant because we have destroyed all the forests in the upstream. Now, if you have been to Kenya, uh, tourism is one of the major uh, income earners in the country. But tobacco farmers now, they go into these forests where the animals are, 
and they cut down trees. And it's a major threat now to our wildlife sector. So it's a, you can see these women uh, from the forest. And they walk long distances, up to about 40, 50 kilometers, to get the firewood from the, the, the national parks. So it's a major problem, a major threat to our economy. Now, generally, we did uh, early this year, we did what is called an environmental audit. Audit is uh, where we try to look at to what extent are these companies, tobacco companies are complying to various environmental laws in Kenya and internationally. We found out that uh, the general compliance is only 15%, 15.5%, which is actually very poor. In other words, they have no, it's like there's nothing in place in terms of environmental conservation, in terms of uh, energy conservation, disposal of uncollected leaves, occupational heritage safety, corporate social responsibility. You know, even corporate social responsibility, they are pesty practices under uh, ISO, yeah, the International Standards Organization. There are standards on how to do CRS. But you see, when we tried to uh, audit and score them, we found out that they are only scoring 11.6%. So they are performing very poorly. Now, let me talk briefly about tobacco and uh, the farmer's health. One thing is that uh, we did a study and we tried to find out the expenditure in terms of your health for a whole year between a tobacco farmer and a non-tobacco farmer. We found out that a tobacco farmer spends more money in a year than uh, a non-tobacco farmer. So he must be having more ailments, more health problems, because he's able to spend about $35 every year more than the other farmers. We interviewed over 400 farmers, we did the expenditures analysis and we came to this conclusion. Now, the major problem is that uh, most farmers actually keep or store tobacco, leave after keyword in the same houses where they stay. So all our 55,000 farmers, their lives are at risk, you know, because tobacco is, uh, they, they believe, it has a high value, so they need to keep it in the house because that's the time it can easily be stored. So you can see the farmers here, how they are checking their tobacco, and they, they are not aware of the kind of uh, health problems they are facing when they go inside the keyword house. Now, they use also various chemicals in the field, and uh, we have statistics on uh, farmers, what kind of problems they are facing. But the major problem they are facing is actually the green tobacco sickness, chest complications, skin and <coughs> irritations, miscarriages among pregnant, man, pregnant women. Like when somebody is, uh, uh, is pregnant, you cannot handle tobacco leaf. Chances are very high, almost 100%, that you will actually miscarry. So it is something which you can talk to the local women and they tell you this is the problem, we cannot be able to handle tobacco uh, during pregnancy. Uh, so it's a major problem in this area because farmers operate without uh, protective cruelty. Now briefly, I'd like to talk about tobacco and that its impact on uh, the economic and social uh, life of, of Kenyans. Uh, one is that uh, we have looked at uh, certain indicators. We looked at housing, yeah? We used housing as an indicator to see whether tobacco farmers are actually getting more money. We found out that there is a bigger percentage of farmers who are not having tobacco. They actually have permanent houses, yeah? They are, they are doing other crops. While those ones who are doing tobacco, you will find most of them in very poor houses. They are a bigger percentage. So if tobacco had money, then you will expect them to be in better houses. 
but this is not the situation. So scientific statistics have shown that tobacco farmers are poorer than the non-tobacco farmers. In terms of education levels, we also found out that uh, you will find more kids who have gone to university, who have gone to high school from non-tobacco families. While those ones from tobacco families, most of them have not gone even to high school. So that is, we have statistics on that. Now, in terms of rapper requirements, tobacco has had a major problem in, uh, in Kenya. And uh, you, you will find that uh, you need the rapper. As a man, you need to get free rapper for you to make a profit. You must get free rapper from your women. Like these are uh, the first and second wife of this man. These are their children assisting them. So the children and the women, they are not paid. So at the end of the season, you get uh, about uh, 85,000 Kenya shrimp. That's like 1,000 euros. That's what you get from one acre. By working nine months, you get 1,000 euros per acre. So that is the matter for, for the whole family of two, three, or four wives and the 20 children working in one acre, you get 1,000 euros for nine months. So that's no money. But do you know the men, if you look at this, that they are, they are men a lot of money because they don't count or they don't pay their wives and, uh, and children. Now, you will find uh, also most tobacco farmers are between two and four wives. While non-tobacco farmers have maybe one wife for the majority. So it's a, it's a crop which encourages uh, polygamy in these regions. I think I would like to stop there and I would like to acknowledge this research is being supported by IDRC Canada, International Development Research Center. We are also collaborating with uh, another uh, organization from China called IMBA, the International Network for Papua and Latin, and also some other universities in Kenya, like Maseno. So, anytime you are in Kenya, uh, we will appreciate Come over, we say Karibu Kenya, that is welcome in Kenya. And if you want to know more about what we are doing in our study in the university is this website www.tobacco to bamboo. I'll talk more about the, the bamboo later on, uh, but you're welcome so much.